All right, working here in the shop, my boy Radzok. All right, working on making some a uh, leatherless cross guards for some swords. Um, today I'm using two pieces of three eighths four pound that have been dapped together, and then holes melted through them. Improperly using a wood burner, because who the fuck uses things for the correct use in dagger here anyway? And then cut with a scroll saw because if you're doing any sort of things to be even remotely fancy, you need one of these. If you're not, you fucking suck. All right. Um, so what we do is we've we've made these and we have uh, cut tiny channels in them because our cores are round today, like that one there. And uh, um, what we're gonna do is we are going to adhere these to the sides of our swords. Like so. All right. Um, we will cut in after these have dapped and cured for at least a full 24 hours, and then I will show the next step. All right, step two, we have adhered our, pros, our perspective cross guards to said cores. Um, holes melted through, as I said. And the next step is to actually use plastic dip as it is intended, which is you will see here, this is one full dip in plastic dip, not brushed on, not smeared on, nothing else. You can see how by its very nature, nature it, uh, um, it constricts and conforms to whatever it's on. Well, uh, when you do so through these holes, it will actually create tension between all these individual holes as it dries. So I'm a, I'm a midget here. Hold the camera. I'm going to be holding the camera, people. All right. And hey, over here. Watch what I'm doing. All right. The waste not, want not. You will start by pouring it directly over the middle where the, uh, where the dap is. And we'll just let this stuff go right through the core. And I gotta be careful when letting this stuff dry because it uh, it can try to warp one way or the other. So while it's drying, you go back and forth with flipping it over. Like I'm gonna kinda slough some of this off here. It's That's a mess. It, it is a messy prospect, so just be prepared for that. Make sure you have something at the bottom to catch that, Dad. Yeah, yeah, smarty pants. Right. That's the stuff that fell off. Also, it's, I'd like to point out that it's very, very important to make sure you let this dap cure. I let this cure about 24 hours, uh, but then, you know, I have enough plastic up here to do it again if I fuck it up. So, uh, normally the full 72, which is the cure time for dap, for those of you who don't know, is the, uh, is the appropriate amount. And I'm just going to shake this stuff off. And realistically, this one layer here, theoretically... Should be fine. Just shake off any excess. You see, I got several of them laying around here that are going to happen. That are sorry, they're going to be done. See, all too easy. I'll put it this way because it's less likely for it to warp one way direction or the other. If it does warp one way or the other. Um, when I add the next layer of four pound, which will probably be in six millimeter strips, um, I'll use that, I'll bend it and just straight up use that to, uh, to straighten it out. Other than that, um, yeah, all too easy. All right, let's do uh, part three of this thing. It's been a full 24 hours. Um, normally the can of ply ship says that you only have to cure for about Four hours per layer, but I'd like to give it overnight just to be sure. Uh, I've taken a sanding block you can get pretty much anywhere, and I have scuffed up said plastic dip on this side of it um, and cut out appropriate size slats. These here are about a uh, 0.2 of an inch thick in any standard Hobby Lobby. Make sure you use your phone coupon on there for about 40% off every single day. It's pretty excellent. Um, and what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to take this, oh, another derailed thing, old dap, right? There are a few things I dislike more than a brand new can of dap. Mostly because getting the mix, you know, mixing it up properly and not having some of the more of the solvent on top uh, can be kind of uh, irritating. And sometimes you won't get a really good bond. So a lot of times with my dap, like when I first get a can, I'll open it up and I'll let it sit like for like, you know, like eight hours or so to let some of the excess stuff go off. And then I'll just buy new cans and continually fill that can. Um, basically, it kind of makes sure that you can get more adhesive on at one time. It's not quite the crap that uh, uh, 
the dab gel is, which is completely and utterly terrible, but it does go on much more viscous, as you can see here. And yeah, this chemical, uh, if you fully allowed your Plasti Dip to uh, cure, there will be no chemical reaction when you do this, which is pretty, which is pretty awesome. I mean, it might become a little bit slippery, but it's whatevs. It won't make a difference. Um, and you just uh, kind of continue to. Do the thing trickier to do holding a phone than you know than anticipated. Yeah, look at all that snot, snot type plastic up, uh, dap all over the shit. All right, it's especially important to make sure that this level of it, that this part of the adhesive process process works really good because um, what we're doing here is a lot of people like to go bottom up when they do their cross guards, like they'll put a piece of flat of something in and then build it up where it's sitting this way across the core. I personally think that's folly because of the weak points being here and here. And while like these weak points do technically exist, as I stack these individual layers of foam over it, uh, any, you know, if you're actually aggressively using your cross guard in combat, um, any strikes coming in will be hitting on the seam. And uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed when you make a shield, uh, all, like uh, the, the ones that will taco more often tend to be the shields that are like, like this piece down here that are a solid one or two inches thick without any individual seams on them. They're more likely to bend. It's actually the individual seams of adhesive that, uh, that make them stronger. Kind of like how you can see, might be able to see on this piece of scrap foam here. These individual seams of adhesive will actually create strength as the two you know, layers basically push and pull across each other. So what I'm gonna do for this one is since they do have a more slender design in here, since we're going for a more cosmetic look, is I'm probably gonna put three pieces on each side of this one and then cut them to shape layer by layer. And so three pieces up, three pieces up. And then uh, I'll get back to you with the next step. All right, breaking cardinal rules. This stuff looked really uh, cured. So, uh, all right, I carved some designs and stuff in here. Utterly not necessary. Um, if you want tutorials and stuff on that, you can go to the Plasti Dip Artist page where people are much better than me at it. There's just a little bit of stuff under there that'll be visible after this uh, dries and shrinks down. Um, same method as before. I just, you know, sprayed, uh, uh, sorry, I just uh, poured it over until everything was smothered, made sure I didn't miss anything. I shook it a lot to make sure there are no air bubbles. And to finish it, I actually got some spray PD here. Um, the spray actually has a larger amount of the leveler in it. So when you do so, it'll help even things out at the end. Uh, and that, and I like, I like to use as little paint as possible because I don't like to seal my uh, munitions grades weapons, like the ones I take to practice every week. So I don't have to want to touch them up with through the roof or anything. So uh, I will spray down this final layer. A great plastic dip of all things, and it will help even things out a little more naturally. And don't worry about stuff like this. You can always just trim this off and post. Just or I poke it down with my finger. Either or. This will also help with it. You can actually see it kind of starting to break down and stuff there too. I had an air bubble there. This thing just popped it. I kind of missed a spot in my palm with you. Alright. I'll let this sit overnight, probably right where it is. Excellent. All right, morning after and all that jazz. Um, you see I missed some spots with my Plasti Dip in here, but oh well. Um, looks like we are complete. Uh, it's an inter been an interesting experiment. I mean, we're a little spongy right here, but uh, all things considering, I'll stop a dag shot pretty much indefinitely, always bounces right back. 
um, to show a previous one I had done. See, obvious experimentation and shape and the like. So, yeah, it's a little spongier than I would have wanted, but you know, that's considering the shape and the cosmetics of it. That's that's pretty cool. You see, these older uh, the older ones used the exact same method when a straight cross garter. And I said this cross guard's probably like what two two almost three years old. I mean, never been replaced. So yeah. So uh, that's that's it. That's uh that's how they're done. Um, pretty excited to get this out on the field.